To God be all the glory for the many things he has done. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. That is my prayer. I pray that you have had a great day on today. I pray that God is blessing you abundantly. I pray that God is keeping you safe. I pray that your family is well. And I pray that God will continuously continue to bless you and keep you in your lives. God bless you. Good evening to all of you. Pastor P here. And we're here to have our to do our second installment on the Bible enrichment study of effective faith. Come on, let's pray. Father, we thank you on this evening for being so good, so grand and so gracious. We thank you, God, for looking over our faults and looking past our faults and still supplying our every need. God, we ask you right now that you would continue to bless us and keep us, continue to make ways out of no ways. Touch our mind, our hearts, and our souls, God, that we'll want to dig into your word, know what your word is saying, know how your word is affecting us, and know that you are still God and beside you there is no other. We thank you on this evening for being so good. Forgive us, Lord, for our sin and our wrongdoing. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you again. We thank you for joining us on tonight uh, as we go into again my second our second installment of Effective Faith. On two weeks ago, we, we talked about what is faith. We, we begin to deal with what was faith? What is faith? And we understood that the Nelson uh, New Illustrated Bible Dictionary says that faith is a belief in or confident attitude toward God involving commitment to his will for our lives. Did y'all hear me? Faith is a belief in or confident attitude toward God involving commitment to his will for one's life. That means that whatever it is that we're asking of God, it should be for God's glory, for God's honor, and for God's praise. And when we ask God of those things, that means we should have a belief or trust in God to say, God, you may not show up when I want, it, want you to show up, but I know, God, you're going to be right on time. I know without a shadow of a doubt that you're going to make ways out of no ways. That's the trust and the faith we ought to have in God. Faith, as mentioned in Hebrews 11, 11 chapter verse one, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11 and one is a description of what faith is. Uh, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, what we are looking for God to do, what we want God to do, the evidence of things not seen. Even though he has not done it, we know that God's going to do it even if we don't see it. We know God can heal. We know God can set free. We know God that can can deliver. But is 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 your faith effective enough that, watch this, even if he doesn't answer your request, that you still believe that God is that God is God. That's that's where we need to be with our faith. That's where we need to, to be to the point where we trust God, even if we can't trace him. We gain that effective faith by the word of God and living for God and allowing God to live in us. Let me say that one more again. We gain that effective faith by the word of God and living for God and allowing God to live in us. You cannot build up your faith by not believing in God. You cannot build up your faith by not reading God's word. God's word is what builds and gives you strength to carry on even if you feel like you want to give up. God, the, the word of God is there for us to read and to study and to acknowledge and to live by so that you will be able to show faith in yourself, but also show others that you have faith. Amen, somebody. So we gain effective faith by the word of God and living for God and allowing God to live for us. Hebrews 12 and 2 says the, that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith, meaning that Jesus himself is the source of our faith. We cannot gain faith by any other way except for by believing in God and then reading God's word. Amen, somebody. So the Nelson 
Illustrated Dictionary again says, faith is a belief in in or confident attitude toward God involving commitment to his will for one's life. Faith includes knowing God and believing in God's commitment to his will for our lives. Amen, somebody. And when we get to a point where we have faith in God and know that God can do anything but fail, then our lives will be better. The teaching of the word of God is what we need and should desire. But our first thought should be about God getting the glory for all things. God getting the glory for all things. When we ask of God something and God delivers, we ought to be giving God praise. Watch this. And even before he delivers, we ought to be saying, Lord, I just want to thank you because you saved my life to the point where I can believe in you, God, in spite of what I'm dealing with. That is a time where you ought to be giving God some praise right there. So what we're going to talk about tonight is how to trust God with all your heart. How can you say, I have faith in God, and and when that's linked to you trusting God, you, you must trust God in order for you to have faith in God. See, see, I, I, I grew up with my mom. My dad was around at times, but my mom is the one that nurtured me. She made me. She 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 raised me. So in order for me to believe mom was going to do something, I had to build up trust in her. Yes, I, I, y'all listen to me real well. You, you, mom, might, mom is the one that, that brought you into the world. But over time, you begin to have more trust in her or more trust in them because you see the abilities or the things that they're able to do, even if it seems as if it's impossible. God should be the one that you have full trust in. You should not get to a place where you say, Lord, I don't think you can do this. Because my God can do anything but fail. My, my trust was in my mother because that time that I lived with her, all the time, that the, the years that I lived with her, I was able to see daily and, and, and every week that she is going to do what she can to help me get through life. And that's how we ought to be with God. We ought to be able to trust God even if we don't see him. Have you ever thought... Will God really come through for me, for you, for me, for you? Will God come through? Will God ever, will, will God make a something happen and bring something, make something come to pass that you didn't think he could do? Now, understand, if you say that you have, you have, if, have said that before, understand you're not the only one. All of us at some point have really thought about it. Why would God give me something knowing I don't deserve it? Why would God bless me in my life knowing that I've done some wrong in my life? And God says, I still love you, child, my child, and I'm going to answer your prayer. I'm going to answer your call and I'm going to allow you to trust me, even if you can't see that the, the light at the end of the tunnel. Will God really come through for me? We sometimes disqualify ourselves because of what we have done in our past. But check this out. When you actually go to God and you say, Lord, listen, I'm sorry. I repent for my sins. God wipes the slate clean. Yes, he has a book. A, a, we, he has the information there, but he, he, he wipes the slate clean. And the problem that we have, my brothers and sisters, is that we sometimes don't do that. We, we, we remember the things we've done in our past and we say, Lord, I know, you know, I can ask you for this, but I doubt you're going to do it. And you do that based on our own ability. But here's the thing. If you have faith in God and you trust God, that means you will trust his word. And if God says he loves you and he's going to answer your call and he's going to come to your rescue, then that means uh, you should you should take that answer to the bank. You should take it to the bank because God is going to answer. God is going to deliver when he when you ask of, of him anything. So how do you trust God? How do you trust God? How can I trust God in moments when you want something so bad, but God doesn't give it to you? Oh, here we go. Can you trust God 
and God's ability to do something, even if it turns out that he doesn't give it to you the way you want it. Can you can you still trust God even when it seems like God has has closed his ears to you and things are getting worse before you get they get better? Can you still trust in God when things when he doesn't deliver in your life, when he doesn't bring things to pass the way you want them, when he doesn't show up when you want him to show up? Can you still trust God? Because a lot of times what happens is God, you ask something of God and God does not give it to you right then, even though he can, because he wants to build up your faith and trust in him. Just like the, the description I gave about my mom over years, it's going to take you over the time of reading God's word. It's going to take you to really trust God because you're going to have to go through some things in order for your trust to be built up in him because he's the one that delivered you. See, you, we sometimes look at people and don't understand why they praise God the way they praise him. We don't understand how is it that they can give God the praise even though they're going through hell all the time. And that's because we have a trust in God because God has brought us out of it one time before. So that means he can do it again. We want to know the answer to or try to figure God out. And that's not our job. God is God alone. Our job is to trust in God and have faith in God. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 55. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 55. And we're going to deal with this part right here of us wanting to know what God is doing and how we how we can try to figure out God, what God is doing. That's not our responsibility, family. Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 and 9. The Bible says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours and my thoughts than your thoughts. God is the supreme being. God is God. And I don't care what people may say. I don't care if people think they have a whole bunch of power. They have no power as as compared to the God that I serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Do you have a hard time trusting God when you can't figure him out or understand his plan? That's not your responsibility. Again, I'm going to say that because God is the one that has the final say on everything. We sometimes look at catastrophes in life. We sometimes even looking at the pandemic right now, we, we, we understand that God has the power to fix the situation. But watch this. God sometimes has to allow some things to come so we can really trust him even in the problems, can trust him even in the situations. And he allows things to happen. God, I don't believe God. Uh is the one that did this pandemic. I believe God allowed it to happen. And that's what we need to look at in life. When someone passes in our lives, understand God, God has the power to overtake, overdo things. God has the power to reverse things. But sometimes God allows some things to happen just so we can come back to trusting him, come back to believing in him. Why? Do we get to a place where we sometimes say, I don't know, God, if you're going to be able to do this, but God, I still trust you. No, you don't, family. <laughs> you, you have to believe in God, even if it don't look good. So when you trust someone in your everyday life, what do you base that trust on? As we just talked about this a few minutes ago, we base the trust on what they have done in their lives before. We base the trust on how they showed love towards toward us before. And we base the trust on what what are some of the things that that we can think of that he is that people have overturned in our lives. So here's the thing. God showed his love and we ought to be able to trust in God. Number one, through the cross. Help me, somebody. When Jesus died on the cross, that should have been enough for us to say, I'm going to trust God no matter what. Because God allowed his only begotten son to live, breathe and die on this earth and then hang on an old rugged cross for you and for me. So we ought to be able to trust God 
because of what he did for us, the love he showed for us, the, the, the care that he showed for us came through the cross. Another way that we can understand God's trustworthiness is through who he is in the Bible. Those characteristics that he has. When you study, you learn the character of God and how he cares for his people. He loves us. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. That's Psalm 103 and 8. The Bible also tells us in John chapter uh, John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So we ought to have the, have the understanding and know the trustworthiness of God through who he is in the Bible. But thirdly, through his love for us in the Bible. He didn't have to do any of those things, but thank God he did. He didn't have to die on the cross. He didn't have to send his only begotten son down here to die for us, but thank God he did. Because the truth of the matter is, if he hadn't, this world would be a mess. It'd be worse off than what it is right now. But so so we thank God on today for those so those many things. OK, so our base scripture tonight will be Proverbs chapter three, verse one through eight. Turn with me there real quickly. Proverbs chapter number three, verses one through eight. King James Version says, my son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. Again, Proverbs chapter three, verses one through eight for length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Here's where we want to base our, our, our study on tonight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own and understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Again, let's go back up to verse five. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. How are you able to trust God? We ought to be able to trust God because of what he has done already, him dying on the old rugged cross and him loving enough of us enough to do so. So we know that we can trust God in our own heart. Instead, we must trust in Lord with our heart. Let me say that again. So we know that we can't trust our heart Instead, we must trust in the Lord with all of our heart. This is to to study and to know the word of God, believing the word of God and acting on the word of God. Let me say that one more time. What this is, is to listen to his word, believe in his word and act upon his word. That's how we trust God completely. We ought to be able to trust God because the strength of his word, the word that comes into our lives should give us enough evidence. Watch this, that we can believe in God in spite of what's been said, in spite of how things may look. We ought to be able to trust God even if things look terrible. We ought to be able to trust God that, that God is going to do what he says he's going to do in spite of how things may look. I know things look bad right now, my sisters and brothers, but watch this. If God can't do it, nobody can do it. God is the one that is the, the, the author and the finisher of our faith. God is the one that that stood out on nothing and made everything. If God can do that, then why can't God heal your body? 
If God can can create a world, why can't God turn things around in your life? If God can create a world, why can't God allow some things to turn around? Your, why can't God give you a job that you're looking for? Why can't God help you with your bills or pay your bills? Why why can't God go to the hospital, the nursing home and do all the things he needs you need him to do in your life, even if it does not look promising? See, my God can do anything but fail. So how do we trust in God? How do we trust in God? The first thing we're going to talk about throughout the rest of this night is uh, in order for us to trust in God, we need to know and acknowledge God for who he is. Who is God? God is all in all. God is all powerful, all knowing. He's everywhere at the same time. I got that. But here's a word I want you to really bank on. Acknowledge God for who he is or acknowledge God's sovereignty. Acknowledge God's sovereignty. Sovereignty of God means that all things are under God's rule and control. All things are under God's rule and control. All things, not just not some things, but all things are under God's rule and and control. God wants you to understand that no matter how bad things are, that he's still in charge. Hear me, hear me, somebody. No matter what the deal is, no matter what the situation is, no matter how bad things look, God is still in charge. He, You can trust God because he has all power. The foundation of trust is knowing, knowing God. And with God is knowing his 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 power, knowing how 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 wonderful God is, knowing how how big God really is. Knowing that God has has the power to do anything but fail. Let, let, let's go to the word. Let's go to the word. Amos chapter number four. Amos chapter number four. Amos chapter number four. Turn with me there real quickly. Amos chapter number four. Amen. Amos chapter number four, verses uh, six and seven. Amos chapter four, Old Testament book of Amos, Old Testament prophet of Amos chapter number four, verse six and seven. The word of God says, but I gave you also cleanness of teeth in all your cities and lack of bread in all your places. Yet you have not returned to me, declares the Lord. This is God talking to 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 his children. Furthermore, I withheld the rain from you while there were still three months until harvest. Then I would send rain on one city and on another city. I would not send rain. One part would be rained on while the part not rained on would dry up. God is sovereign over mother nature. Sometimes we think mother nature is bigger than God. But how about this? God can speak to something and tell it to stop. God can have it rain on one side of the street and not rain on the other side. And that's what he's saying in Amos. Furthermore, I withheld the rain from you, verse seven, while there was still three months until harvest. Come on here. Then I would send rain on one city and on another city, I would not send rain. One part would be rained on while the part not rained on would dry up. And a lot of times what happens is we look for God to do some things, but yet we have not been faithful to him. And, and, and I'm going to put this in your, in, your, in, your, in your lap right now. Don't think that God is going to bless mess. Don't think that God is going to give you and keep, keep providing for you when you're not doing what he says to do. So God has is sovereign over Mother Nature. God is able, watch this, to clear up the famine right now. God is able to get rid of the pandemic right now. But here it is. God has to get our attention. God has to show us that he is still God and beside him there is no other. God has to really put our, our, our focus back on him because he is the one. That has all power, all authority. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. 
But what we tend to do is we try to make it about us. And it's not about us. It's about God. God is sovereign over nature. Now, I, now, now one of the funny things that I've seen before uh, when I was a young boy, I was very young. I was very young. And I'm sitting at my aunt's house and um, I look outside of the front door and on the other side of the, the road on Highway 258 in Jacksonville, I look on the other side of the road and it's raining over there. Come on here, y'all. On our side of the road, which is now a four, four, four or five lane highway because there's a turning lane in the middle. Now, it was raining on that side of the road, but it was not raining on our side of the road. Wow. And I said, oh, Carrie, what's he? She said, God is showing his sovereignty. He's showing himself. And what we need to do is we need to believe in God no matter how rough the road is. Know that God is sovereign. He is um, that, that all things are under God's rule and control. He's sovereign over nature. He 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 made the trees and also provides nurturing for the trees to grow. Come on here, y'all. He, he made the sky. He put the clouds up there and the stars in there. He made the sea and put the fish in the sea. Come on, Genesis one. He, he did all these things. He orchestrated the plan of how he wanted his world to be. And now. He's continuously being sovereign even over that. We serve a good God, y'all. But Amos is letting us know that he's sovereign over nature. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe you don't believe that one. Turn, turn with me to Psalm 105 and 16. Psalm, Psalm 105 and 16. Psalm 105 and 16. I, I, I know, I know, it. I know it. he's sovereign. He's sovereign. He's a good God and he's worthy of all the praise. Sovereign. He's sovereign over famines. He can make a famine happen. We learned that a little bit in Amos, because if you read that whole chapter, Amos, Amos is talking about a famine and how 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 they looked at God and didn't return to God. He, uh Oh, here we go. How, how, how God continuously blessed them. But at the same time, when they he, they were blessed by God, they turned away from God. So he can actually bring a famine. He God can bring a famine. God loves us enough to bring a famine because in order for us to have a famine, that means something was going on wrong. And he'll bring a famine. Watch this. Just for us, us to turn back to him. His children weren't doing that. So he had to show them. I got all power, not you. Just because you got a little money in your pocket or a little money in your bank account, maybe because your name is what it is. That does not mean that you have more power than God. Psalm 105 and 16. Psalm 105 and 16 says, and he called for a famine upon the land. He broke the whole staff of bread. Oh, come on. He called for famine. The history recorded in Genesis 37 through 50 is in view. Verses 16 through 22 refer to Joseph's experience in Egypt. And we have to understand that no matter what's going on, that we have to focus on God. What did I tell y'all about that, 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 that definition? That definition lets us know again that we have to trust in God. We have to be able to say, Lord, even if you don't do it in this season, I do believe that you're going to do it. He has a, he's sovereign over famines. He can make things dry up. He, he, can, he can make things happen just by speaking. If y'all remember, y'all remember the story of Joseph. Joseph went through all that he went through all those years. But then God allowed a famine to come through the land. And the purpose, part of the purpose of the famine to come through the land is so that they would have to come and, and see their brother, even though they didn't recognize him. And then when they did recognize him, God, God put, put so fit to not allow Joseph to retaliate, but to love them. Come on here, y'all. Job, if you think Job, if you think about the story of Job, Job actually had the opportunity to to allow his friends to be damned for the rest of their life. Job had the opportunity to do that. But Job, but God said, no, 
I want you to pray for your friends, even though they said this was all your fault, even though things happened to you in your life and they supposed to know you better than anybody else. They still turn their back on you. And Job's and, and, and Job didn't do it. Job prayed for them. And the Bible lets us know in that 42nd chapter of Job that he was given. He was blessed double portion of everything that he lost. And then he was renewed. He, he, he received 10 more children. His seven daughters were even more beautiful than the first group that he had. They were the, mo the most beautiful women in the land because that's how powerful God is. God is a sovereign God. And when we understand the sovereignty of God in, in nature and in, in famines, then we ought to be able to say, can't nobody do me like my Jesus. God is an awesome God. And he's worthy to be praised. So so the first thing that he's sovereign over, and I'm going to give you four of them, is nature, which is in Amos chapter four, verse seven. That's just an example. The second is he's sovereign over famines. He can make things happen in this world if he really wants it to. He can allow it to happen because that's how powerful our God is. The third thing is, and, and it goes back to nature as well, is in Mark chapter four. Verses 39 through 41. Mark chapter 4, verses 39 through 41. Y'all know this story. Y'all know this story. And that's the story of him, him, him stopping and, and halting the storm from taking over. Psalms, I mean, I'm sorry, Mark chapter number 4, verses 39 through 41. The word of God says, and he got up, Jesus did. And rebuked the wind and said to the sea, hush or peace, be still. Uh-huh. Peace, be still. And the wind died down and it became perfectly calm. And, and, and he said to them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? They became very much afraid and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? He, he, you have the, the people that have been rolling with him and they've been seeing what he has done. He's opened up blinded eyes, healed the lame, uh, 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 put words in the mute's mouth. He, he's allowed some things to happen and they've seen these things, but yet they were on the boat with the word and still didn't believe. My question to you on tonight is, how many times have you had Jesus rolling with you and you didn't believe he can do what he said he would do? How, how many times have you have you watched God perform miracles in your life? Watch God steady some things in your life. But at the same time, when another opportunity for God to show himself comes, you get scared. You lose faith. Effective faith is, is knowing how sovereign our God is, knowing that he can stop things from happening, knowing that he can calm the storms in your life, knowing that God is able to do it without any help from you, because that's the type of God we serve. You need to we need to get to a place where we believe in God and we trust God in spite of our past and what we have been through. God is a good God. And when we get to a place where we say, God, I believe in you, I trust in you, then God will actually pour out some blessings upon your life that you don't have room to receive. Now, now, now check this out. He, he, he is sovereign over nature, mother nature. He's sovereign of, over famines. He's sovereign over storms in your life. But here's another one. He is sovereign over the affairs of of our lives, which means he may allow some things to happen in your life, but at the same time, he has the power to take them back, the power to remove them. God is so faithful and we can trust God that that even if we having a hard time, we know that God can turn that thing around. How, how often have you found yourself in a pickle? How often have you found yourself in a place where you didn't know if you were going to be able to make it? The Bible tells us, trust in the Lord with all your heart, not with just part of it, 
Don't just trust him on Sundays. Don't just trust him when he when he pours out a blessing into your life. Don't just trust him when your bills are paid, but trust in the Lord with all your heart, all the time, with every bit of you. You ought to be able to trust God, even if you can't see him. I keep saying that we ought to have enough trust in God and faith in God that even if he don't show up when you want him to, you know, he's still going to show up. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. We serve a gracious, loving God. But here's the thing. He's sovereign also over the affairs of our lives, over the affairs of our lives. What do you mean, Pastor? Proverbs chapter 20, Proverbs chapter number 20, uh, verse, uh, I'm sorry, Proverbs 19. Let's go to 19 first. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. It says, many plans are in a man's heart. But the counsel of the Lord will stand. Many plans are in a man's heart. Many things that you want to do. Many things that you want to say. Many things that you want to, 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 to have happen in your life. But check this out. Is God in the midst of that? Can you trust God enough to say, God, if this is not right for me, don't allow me to have it. Can you trust God enough to say and, and believe in God enough to say that, God, I know you're going to do what's best for me. So if I ask anything and it's not what you would have me to have, then I know you're going to not have not bring it to me. Can you trust God enough for that? Can you trust God enough to say that whatever you're doing in this season, Lord, don't do it without me, because I know, God, that you're not going to leave me out because I have been faithful over a few things and you make me ruler over many. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. Let's read that again. It says many plans, many things are in a heart, in a man's, in a man's heart. Many things you want to say, many things you want to do in a man's heart. But the counsel of the Lord will stand. The, 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 the proverb is letting us know that we and we want to do so much. But is it God's will? Have you actually cons, cons have you actually gotten counsel from God? Have you actually talked to God? Have you prayed to God and asked God, is this what you want me to do? Have you ever found yourself? Let me say it like this. Have you ever found yourself saying, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind when I get into that job tomorrow? Oh, they, they gave me the, the dickens on today. So I'm going to go tomorrow. If they come in there and they start acting like that tomorrow, I'm going to give them a piece of my matter of fact. No, nope, I ain't going to let them have it. I'm just going to walk in there and tell everybody how I feel. And then what God does. Because he don't want you to lose your job. <laughs> he'll calm you down, give you perfect peace that night, give you a wonderful day in the morning when you wake up. God, God will 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 calm your spirit and let and, 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 and remind you that he is sovereign. He is God. He's the one that has control and is ruler over you. He, uh, he, he is sovereign over the affairs of your life. He can make you turn away from wanting to say something and not allow you to do it. How many times have you stopped yourself? Have you have God put a hold or a mute on your mouth before you said something that you had no business saying? We serve a good God, y'all. And he is so worthy. I say he's so worthy of all the praise. Proverbs, turn over, I think, one page, maybe. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24 says man's steps are ordained by the Lord. How then can man understand his way? That's a question. That's a good question. How then can a man understand his way? How, how can a man understand his way? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Since a man cannot comprehend the unfolding, the unfailing purposes of God's providence in his life, he has to walk by 
faith. Y'all, y'all didn't catch that. Let, let's read verse 24 again. Man's steps are adorned, ordained by the Lord. How then can man understand God's way? God is the supreme being. God is sovereign. And if God is sovereign, that means that we need to step back and let God be in, in, in ahead. We need to step back and let God be in charge. And with that being said, he has the affairs of our lives. He knows what's best for us. And when we sit there and try to do things outside of the realm of God, outside of the will of God, we're actually uh, uh, basically spitting on God's word. We're disrespecting God, if you will. Man's steps are ordained by the Lord. Mm -hmm. How then can man understand his ways? He, 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 Isaiah just told us his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. And because we can't comprehend to his level, then we ought to stay in our place. We ought to understand that no matter what's going on in our lives, no matter how rough things might seem, no matter where it is we're turning to, that God is the one that has the final say. God is the one. Let's, let, let, let's do one more. James chapter number four. James chapter number four. He has the affairs of our lives. He, God, God is sovereign over the affairs of our lives. James chapter number four, uh, verses 13 and through 15. Amen, somebody. James chapter number four, starting at verse 13. Come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will we'll go to such and such a city and spend a year there and engage in business and make a profit. Yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. You are just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. And then vanishes away. If the Lord wills, we will live and also do this or that. But, but as it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Therefore, to one who knows the right thing to do, and does not do it to him. It is sin. OK, OK. So if we're looking at God being sovereign over the affairs of our life, that means that when you don't do what God says, then you're out of his will. Come on here. If you don't do what God says, then you're out of his will. So let's read it again. Come now, ye who say today or tomorrow will go, we will. We will go to such and such a city and spend a year there and engage in business and make a profit. Verse 15. Let's go down to verse 15. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and also do this or that. I, I, I remember grandma used to say, uh, if the Lord don't come, the creek don't rise. I, I remember gr grandma used to tell me that 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 everything is all about what God will allow us to do. And that's so true even in today's uh, today's life. We have to be able to understand that no matter what's going on, that we serve a sovereign God. God has all power. He rules over everything and he has control over everything. Again, you may not understand why you are dealing with the things you're dealing with, but understand that God is bigger than any problem that you can have. God is able to turn things around even in your life today. God can make a way out of no way. And when we begin to understand this, we take the first step toward genuine trust. We take the first step in understanding the sovereignty of God. God has power enough to turn everything around right now. But yet the question is, why hasn't he done it? That's the question. And can you trust God because of what he's done for you in the past? If God has made a way for you one time before, he sure enough can do it again. My Bible tells me he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So if that's the case, why can't we trust him even when it seems like he's not listening God is sovereign 
over nature. God is sovereign over famines. God is so sovereign over weather, storms in your life. And God is sovereign over the affairs of your life. Now, let me let me put something in here about the affairs of our life. We can make decisions over our own life and it be against God. Watch this. And God will allow them just so he can turn us back to where he is. <laughs> God can allow us to go ahead and go through with our own decision. With our own thinking, he could, he will allow us to go ahead and 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 he'll give us warning sign. No, you don't want to do that. No, you don't want to do that. But at the same time, if we sit here and say, Lord, I want to try it anyhow. God will at times allow you to go ahead and do it. And then when it does not work, you have no other choice but to come back to him. My God is awesome. He loves you enough to give you what you ask for. But at the same time, have enough compassion, enough grace and enough mercy over you that he will allow you to come back to him. Even with the mistake that you made, you make a bad decision, but God still loves you. People aren't that same way. Some people are not that same way, but God will allow you to go out there and make a bad decision and still allow you to come back to him. However, you still got to repent. You got to ask God to forgive you. You got to understand, they were asked, the, the, the children of Israel were asking God to give them a king. They wanted to be like their neighboring countries. They wanted to be like the be like the Joneses, if you will. And God said, no, you don't need no king, because if, if you get a king, you're gonna, he, they're going to be a tyrant. They're going to be God. God says they, they're not going to be good for you. And they kept asking God for a, a king. They kept asking God, give us what we want. So God gave it to them. And when God gave it to them. It was exactly as bad as God said it was going to be. And then they wanted to come back to God. How many times have you made a decision in life before you consulted or had counsel with God and God gave it to you and God allowed it to happen in your life? And then you wish that God would have said no. I talked about that in GIT this morning. What happened? Can you still praise God when God says no? Can you still praise God when God tells you you don't need it? Can you still praise God when God is telling you that's not going to be good for you? Can you still give God the praise in spite of what things are, are happening in your life? First Thessalonians tells us, give God praise, rejoice, rejoice, give God praise in everything. So if God says no, then let it be no and understand there's a reason behind that. No, understand there's a reason why God is saying no. And when you understand that, you'll be able to trust God with all your heart. You won't lean to your own understanding. You will acknowledge him, trust him, give him praise, acknowledge him in all your ways. And he will direct your path. He'll show you the direction you need to go in. He'll show you where you need to go. He'll show you who you need to hang with. He'll show you who you need to, to deal with. If you get counsel from him, because he's a sovereign God. Sovereign again means uh, that all things are under God's rule or control. He has all power. He has all authority. He knows everything. He's everywhere at the same time. That's why you ought to be able to trust God. Faith, your trust is attached to your faith because you can't have faith in God if you can't trust God. Amen, somebody. If you don't have faith in God, if you don't trust God, you can't have faith in God. And you have to be able to trust God in everything that's going on in your life in spite of what you're dealing with. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. That is my prayer. Next week, we're going to look at this week. We took a look at acknowledging God for who he is. Next week, we're going to talk about God's goodness. How good has God been to you to the point where you ought to be able to trust him, even if you don't see him. God bless you. Come on, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for tonight's lesson. We thank you, God 
for being so good, so kind to us. We thank you, God, for loving on us, for taking care of us. Even when we don't know what's going on, you are still there, God. We believe in that and we know, God, that you are a way maker, you are a heart regulator, you are a mind fixer. God, we thank you on tonight for being so good, so gracious, and so kind. Now, Lord, continue to bless our mind, our hearts, and our souls. Allow us to be and to stay in your will and not be in your way. Thank you, Lord, for the word. We thank you, Lord, for the word that, that is in our heart that we might not sin against you. God, continue to help us, please us, make us, make us do things the way you want them to be done and not how we want them done. We thank you, God, on tonight. Forgive us, Lord, for our sin and our wrongdoing. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, God bless you, family. I love you, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. Have a blessed week. Hope to see you Sunday morning at 930 as we have our Cyber Celebration Sunday uh, at this Sunday at 930. God bless.